Hi there, welcome to the Own Your Expertise interview series. I'm Emily Crookston, owner and decider of all things at The Pocket PhD. I'm the ghostwriter for Rebels, Renegades, and Mavericks, and I love helping experts with big ideas get those ideas out of their heads and into the world. Today, I'm sitting down with Jocelyn Brady. She describes herself as the story CEO at Scribe Story Studios. And I just love Jocelyn's about section on LinkedIn. That's one of the first things I read about her and I, I was really drawn to her writing style. It's bold and fresh and straightforward. So if you haven't looked at it, definitely take a peek. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to sit down with you, Jocelyn, and chat today. So welcome. Would you, you tell us a little bit more about who you work with and what you do? Yeah, so I Story CEO, Scribe Story Studios. Uh, it's a company that I've run for the past 12 years. and started off just as scribe so been in the middle of a rebrand wow. and um yeah you know super fun to do that for yourself uh, historically we've helped clients do that and figuring out how to articulate their story and you know the core messages and the strategy behind it um, it's quite a different thing when you're doing that for yourself our bread and butter has been corporate clients in mm -hmm. tech and finance which i never thought i would be doing that um, yeah. growing up as you know from my um, LinkedIn profile, I grew up on welfare and we were homeless for a while. So like writing or doing messaging strategy for a financial company is like the furthest thing from my mind. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought I might be like an astronaut or a veterinarian or uh, all over the place really. <laughs> um, but we also help small businesses and I really love working with startups and mm. uh, entrepreneurs or people who are stepping into something new and have a new idea something unknown and kind of scary for them yeah. so yeah yeah i imagine you know you help people sort of tell their stories so it, it makes sense that you would be working with people who maybe are stuck <laughs> in that place of not knowing what the story is or not knowing how to express that story for the world right and I, i'm sure yeah. stepping in and telling you and help having you help shape that is really useful and helpful Exactly. And it's the, it's not only the story of, you know, their, their company um, or brand or product for that matter, but what is the story they're telling themselves? So a lot of it's mm. combining uh, storytelling and coaching and consulting. It's like this hybrid approach and pulling that out of people because I believe you have the answers. They're already in you. It's my yeah. job is to just guide you to, uh, you know, like a Sherpa get it out get the get the right story out for the audience you're trying to attract yes that's that's so right i i believe 100 percent. i agree with you about that it's all up here somewhere <laughs> i do that a lot with my clients as well like let's pull this out like you know what you do just tell me what you do and then we'll make it into a story we'll make it make sense to people who don't who aren't in your head every day right exactly cool yeah. so how would you describe your path to becoming an expert yeah i think uh, in your questionnaire, I was thinking about, am I an expert? What does it mean to even say you're an expert? It's such an yeah. interesting question. Um, yeah. And there's a, I think there might be a fine line between owning, yeah, I'm an expert, but also being an expert means I know enough to know I'll never know everything. Mm -hmm. And that there's always something to learn. So I, I think of it as a path of curiosity, maintaining curiosity and having a strong opinion, but also knowing I could be wrong. <laughs> the kind of balancing the, it's like that there's magic in the juxtaposition of that, of having the confidence to say, I don't know, I think this will work. Maybe it won't, but let's stay curious about it and, and, you know, make adjustments as we go. Yeah, that's so important because I think no matter what level of business or success you find, I doubt anybody, you know, if you talk to, I don't know, one of the CEOs, the, the big famous people, Warren Buffett or something, I bet if you asked him, he would be like, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm yeah. still figuring these things out and I'm still experimenting, right? So that's so important to, to recognize that. And I love that, that you can both own your expertise, but also at the same time realize, but I don't know everything and I'm still experimenting here. And I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still on the path <laughs> to being whatever it is <laughs> that I'm trying to be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like that old saying, uh, if you're ever the smartest person in the room, find a new room. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Um, so I really like to ask people, what's your die in a ditch belief? And this comes from my philosopher days. Um, philosophers have what they call the die in the ditch beliefs, the ones you aren't willing to give up, right? The ones that you, nobody can shake you from. So tell us about your die in a ditch belief. Yeah, it's also such a great question. I was thinking, what is it? You know, some of the things that came to mind are um, around storytelling, obviously, because I use yeah. the word all the time and it's so important to me. And I believe that the stories we tell ourselves and each other literally shape how we see the world and what we believe is possible and how people feel around us mm. and what they think is possible. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, uh, I think kindness is the most important currency in being a human and you know having empathy be willing to i just saw michelle obama last night too he's like yes you are speaking my language yeah um being able to recognize it's like how many people are there on the planet now seven billion something and yeah. one of us we have this tiny tiny lens that's just mm. people living today this tiny mm -hmm. perspective on life and uh if we're open, if we're kind with ourselves and with each other, we realize we, we just have so much more to learn from each other and to help nurture and support each other as we go through life, which can be hard as fuck. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to swear on this. I'm That's sorry. okay. <laughs> totally. I'm all about swear words. When a well-placed swear word is very important, right? Spice. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting how much our self-talk influences how much you know we present to the world and what we do and say to other people I think oh, that's for sure really yeah. Key. yeah yeah and I think sometimes those are hidden you know we don't always mm. know why why are we being so angry or um, sad mm. or sometimes they're obvious um, but a lot of the time it's this unexamined thinking unexamined narratives that our brain has created um yeah there's this there's this book called prometheus rising i don't know if you've mm, heard of it yeah. robert anton wilson this guy's super interesting he's a comedian at one point kind of a philosopher and he uh expands on this idea that there's a thinker and a prover so anything you mm. anything the thinker thinks the prover proves and you could think that the earth is flat or the earth is round. You could think that the earth is uh, stacked on top of a bunch of turtles into infinity. Yeah. And your brain will create stories to, to um, you know, convince you that that's true because we can't deal with all this uncertainty all the time. So, right. yeah, for sure. So fascinating. <laughs> I could yeah. totally geek out about that stuff all day. <laughs> I know. That's why, I mean, that's why I labeled this stuff story science. Because right. I'm kind of a science nerd. I'm not uh -huh. a trained neuroscience, but I got really um, pretty obsessed with how the brain interprets, creates language and processes it. And then how we, how do we communicate with another, like all this stuff in here has to make yes. sense in your space. Right, right, right. And um, yeah, it started when my dad had a stroke in my, in my early twenties. Oh. Uh, and yeah. I learned from there that you have neuroplastic, the brain is plastic, it can change. Right. Right. and how the processes work of you can understand things and not be able to express them. There could be these different connections that are broken. Right? I love that connection with the science that, that you and, the, and the, the people you work with do. That's, that's really fascinating and cool. And I love bringing that kind of stuff to the world when they, who, you know, people who don't know about all that brain science and uh, being able to write in a way that makes the science sound cool and interesting is, is a really yeah. unique skill, important skill, I think. And it is cool and interesting. I think yeah, it's like, I want everyone to know this is, it's fun and it explains a lot. Um, and, it, and historically has been not, you know, very approachable, um, right. but yeah. it helps us. It's just, an, it's another form of storytelling. Science is just storytelling yeah. that has been, you know, created through observation and experiment right. to help us understand more. Yeah, totally. Very cool. Yeah. Life is is all kinds of things but if you're sort of just appreciative of what's there you can kind of smile and get through it and um mm -hmm. be okay not knowing also be vulnerable yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so much for sitting down with me today jocelyn can you tell us where we can learn more about you yeah it's jocelyn brady on linkedin 
and describe storystudios.com. I'm also at jocelynbrady.com. <laughs>